Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Focus on the MENA region. During our last episode, we were discussing Morocco. Uh, today, we will be discussing another country, namely Lebanon. As you know, the country has been going through unprecedented crisis, not only politically, but also economically and socially. Therefore, today we have invited with us uh, Tom uh, van den Kendelare. Tom is a member of the European Parliament. He is also a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, where he uh, is shadow rapporteur on Lebanon. He is also head of the NATO delegation and member in the Agriculture and Internal Market Committee. Tom, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and thank you uh, for your time. Uh, my first question would be uh, regarding your position as shadow rapporteur on Lebanon. How do you see and assess the current situation in the country? Well, I'm afraid I, I won't mince my words uh, when I have to describe the situation. The country is really on the verge of collapse. And um, I see serious concerns, not only politically, but also economically and socially, and of course, from a security viewpoint. viewpoint. Politically, we now know that the date for the elections have been sh has been shuffled around uh, for a few times. Um, elections do need to take place, uh, yet at the same time we see that former Prime Minister Saad Hariri has announced that he would um, uh, take a distance from political life and that he would not present himself again at the election. So uh, what kind of political stability can we wish for? Economically and socially speaking, uh, I see that more or less half of the population is considering leaving the country and obviously we need this Lebanese uh, population to build up its country again uh, and to support um, the reforms that hopefully will arrive um, and, and to really give body to these, uh, to these uh, reforms. And last but not least, from a security viewpoint, um, the um, presence of Hezbollah in the country and the implication, uh, big implication I would say, of Iran, uh, presence of Iran uh, in the country as well, I think is concerning uh, and uh, has a clear risk for the long-term stability of the country. You mentioned elections, and I would like to take a bit of time to focus on this question. Uh, they're supposed to take place uh, mid-May this same year. Um, we heard many times from opposition parties, but also from activists um, and, and, and different colleagues that there is this fear that maybe the current uh, ruling parties will try to postpone the elections. I would like to ask you, uh, in your view, um, what should uh, and could EU, for instance, do in case they, they decide to postpone the elections? And what will be our EPP uh, and especially EPP's group position in the parliament regarding this? Well, as I already said, I think um, the holding, the mere holding of the elections is crucial uh, for the future reform of the country. Uh, it is, let's say, the first building, building block if we want uh, a new future for the country that hopefully will also be based on the necessary IMF uh, reforms. Um, therefore, these elections need to take place. Um, not only that, but also the 2022 budget still needs to be voted and uh, elections need to be able to take place in a fair, transparent and free manner. Uh, I think it is uh, up to the European Union uh, and within that to the European People's Party to try and show its concern um, uh, about these elections that they run in a proper and orderly way. I would hope that we can send an electoral observation mission also uh, to go and monitor uh, the elections. But also it needs to be clear that the uh, organizing committee uh, of the elections is being given the funding uh, and the time and, and means that is needed to be able to organize uh, proper elections uh, as they are, as I said, crucial for the future of the country. I would like to move to another uh, topic now, uh, and uh, mainly the Beirut uh, port uh, blast. Um, over uh, since since this happened, this tragic event happened, there has been no real uh, investigation achieved. Um, the fam families of the victims and all of the Lebanese people are still waiting uh, for justice to be done. Um, and all those uh, responsible to be, uh, to be uh, held uh, accountable. Um, how do you see actually all this? Uh, Hezbollah and its allies have been trying to obstruct uh, the, the, the investigation led uh, by, uh, by the judge uh, Tarek Bitar. 
Um, and till today, we have absolutely uh, no result. Um, what, what is your uh, assessment of, of this, uh, this event? And, uh, and how do you see actually that EU could, could act in this regard? Well, not only me, but I think all of the global community find it outrageous that there hasn't been a proper investigation yet uh, of what happened uh, in the Beirut port. Um, and it is indeed clear that Hezbollah is obstructing uh, this investigation. Not only that, but I think also here Hezbollah is preventing the country from being workable, from the government from being workable at all. And I think this is uh, something that needs to change uh, in the future. If um, the EU wants to put a message across to Lebanon, it's a message that we attach great importance to rule of law, that we attach great importance to the independence of the judiciary, and this is indeed a message we should continue to put across in the light of the lack of investigation so far in the Beirut port blast. I would like to move now to another question. Um, a few months ago, there, was, there were really intense discussions uh, on EU level. Should we have sanctions on all those who were obstructing at that time the formation of the government and all those who are responsible about the current situation in the country? Um, I have two questions for you. I would like to ask you first, um, are there any plans that the EU joins international partners such as the US or UK uh, on, on uh, putting sanctions of, for all those who are responsible for the current situation in the country? And are there simply plans on EU level to have any sanctions? Well, it is indeed true that uh, the EU has adopted a framework for sanctions on the 30th of July last year. Um, and that would be for persons that are uh, in all kinds of manners obstructing uh, the rule of law and uh, uh, the independent functioning also of the, of the judiciary. Um, I think DPP remains very much in favor of using targeted sanctions uh, against uh, those persons. And let me be clear too that whenever uh, the election date uh, would uh, be postponed or the elections would be postponed again, or there would be any uh, issue with the free and fair holding of the elections, I think the EAS shouldn't hesitate to, to take sanctions. Um, but we need to see the bigger picture also. I think all of the global partners uh, that are concerned about Lebanon have to play their role. And I think indeed uh, EU, need, EU needs to take uh, its part uh, of, uh, of the responsibility there. Let us go to an actor that has been mentioned so many times in our discussion, namely Hezbollah, um, and the role they play in the country. Um, over the past years, uh, several uh, countries have been putting, EU member states, some of them have been putting actually Hezbollah on the terrorist list organization in its entirety. Today, this is not the case for the EU. We have only uh, the military wing of the Hezbollah that is on, uh, on, on the terrorist, terrorist, list organiza uh, terrorist organizations list. Um, I would like uh, to ask you, what is the current mood regarding this in the Parliament, uh, and especially in our uh, group, namely the EPP group? In the Parliament, the EPP group was actually the most vocal about uh, the enormous effect the external interference into uh, the Lebanese government has on, let's say, the stability of the country. And when we see that um, Hezbollah is holding a number of key ministries, we cannot have but the impression that the smooth running of the country is uh, being impeded upon. Um, indeed, um, the military wing of Hezbollah uh, is on the list um, and that is a thorny issue uh, that still needs to, needs to be further discussed also, I think, within the European People's Party. I think what we all want is that Lebanon can take up again its role of neutral country in a wider region that uh, has its own problems for a while now. And to me, that means uh, a country that can be not only indeed neutral, but that can again be economically prosperous, that can be free, and that can be, uh, that can, where a population can live in peace with itself. Last but not least, um, how do you see EU, uh, but mainly EPP's support to Lebanon and its people in this upcoming year 2022? The EU is a long-standing friend of Lebanon and the only thing we want is to give the Lebanese people what they really deserve, economic prosperity, security and independence. As for the EPP, I think the message is equally strong or perhaps even stronger. Lebanon is one of the very few countries where we have strong party political relations and I take the fate of all Lebanese people very much at heart in these dire times. But no one can blame me, I think, uh, for taking in for 
in particular uh, showing my concern about the fate of ethnical and cultural Christians in the country with obvious respect to the religious and ethnic diversity of the Lebanese people. Thank you very much, Tom, for your time, for your open and honest uh, answers, and thank you very much for watching.